going to show you up, my perfect puppy? Yes, we are, because that's real life with dogs, isn't it? Yes, it really is. Hi guys, so for today's video, we are going to be looking at Moose's development. So Moose is now eight months old. now so this is not the 10 week old puppy that I had this is a very very different dog so his foundations are all in place his training is in place he's been absolutely great but I really wanted to bring you kind of real life today and what actually happens to your dog when they hit adolescence particularly for the male it's quite noticeable so testosterone is a really powerful hormone there are specific receptor cells in the brain that recognize the message that that hormone sends and the dog really needs to start becoming relevant in its social pack environment really. So we're going to take a look at him now. He's having a really hard time actually. Hogan was pretty much a breeze. He didn't really struggle through adolescence at all. The only thing he really showed was a bit of irritability which manifested with some pacing and that was about it. So he would just wander around of a night but nothing really. Whereas Moose is a totally different kettle of fish. So let's take a look at where we're at with him now. Okay, come on, let me show you this. This is um, somebody's handiwork, isn't it? And a seriously schoolboy error from the dog behaviorist. Never has this ever, ever happened. And this is my most perfect puppy. He was even, I would say, a smidgen better than Hoax. You can hide it on your way. Thank you. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? There's a little bit, yes, but it doesn't stop there. This is, mm, 15 minutes handiwork, whilst, and I'm, and I'm not even joking, 15, 20 minutes he was in the kitchen with his brothers. Check out my sofa. Three days into when I noticed that adolescence had started to hit, this is me trusting my puppy because I thought he was amazing hadn't actually taken into account the fact that we are hitting the adolescence head on so this was you wasn't it the funny thing was when we came in and um, it was Hogan that was sitting in his bed looking guilty not actually moved so anyway he's done it in a, a fairly decent place that I can cover it over and pretend like it wasn't a massive epic fail on my part um, so yes it happens to the best of us It was about two weeks into him being eight months old. It was like someone flipped a switch. But we spotted it just a little too late for the sofa to survive, unfortunately. <laughs> Funny little update. His autoimmune condition has calmed down a bit. All his fur started growing on his back, so that's the good news. Unfortunately, the steroids are causing quite a lot of muscle wastage. He's losing the muscle on his back end now, and he's not doing the big walks that he was doing, so this will probably be our last video with him. He's enjoying his little life, but we're keeping it fairly low key, aren't we? Good boy. He's still got a bark for us when people arrive, though. It's all good. <laughs> I've just got some beautiful socks, especially for me. Look at these! My little budster Lola. Look guys! Oh, you want to run off with it? Go on then. We're going to practice the uh, drop and leave it. Moose! Drop! Good! Leave it! Good boy! Well done! It works! Very nice! <laughs> Boy, take another one. 
me? To me? Oh, very good. Out. Out. Nothing like a bit of organic training. Best way to train your dog is around your household chores. Then you don't have to find extra time, do we? Go and meet Lenny. Should we go see Lenny? What do you think? Beautiful, good boy. Find a lead. So this is where the self-control comes in on the walk. <laughs> He's got to keep this little wiggle bum still. And this is very difficult when you're eight months old. We don't engage with any of this. We just literally wait for him to work out. He wants to go on his walk. So we wait for him to work out how and when the lead goes on and the collar and what behaviour he needs to show us. So we'll go to put it on. If he moves, we're going to just stop. So this is just getting him to deal with a little bit of frustration. And he's trying all sorts of different ways to get me to put the collar on. And if I put the collar on when he's jumping up or I chat to him when he's jumping up, he's going to carry on jumping up. So we'll wait till he's like this. Are we ready? Good boy. And then we can put it on with no dramas. Just make sure when you do these clips, you don't do the clip right by the dog's ear just so you A, don't trap the dog's ear in the clip and also the noise is not particularly nice, so we'll do it round the back of his head. Good boy. Same for the lead. He knows what he needs to do, don't really need to tell him. So again, we wait till the dog's nice and stable before taking it to the next stage. So if you've got a dog that drags you out of the front door and it's difficult to manage outdoors and you don't spend the first five minutes just taking control of the situation and the environment before you leave, you're always gonna be playing catch up on the walk. So just take that extra time just to make sure you're leaving the house with a calm dog before you walk out, okay? So we use every boundary that we hit just to calm the dog down. It's not about who goes through first. It's about making sure that you walk into the next environment with a dog who's calm and respectful, has manners and is listening. If I let him barge through in front of me, it's going to be him making the decisions moving forward instead of me, which is not going to be particularly pleasant for anyone we meet. Is it? Should we help you out here? So it's all about helping the dog cope with each new environment as we enter them. Let's see how he does. I also want to control his energy coming through here. So that he gets into the habit of not just getting to here and then racing past. I don't want him to do that because again we've lost control of the situation. So heel work starts at this point. So this is easy for me to keep control of him here. He knows what he needs to be doing and there's very little stimulants, in fact none. So he should really be listening. But he's obviously excited for the walk, so he's a little bit aroused. So it does mean you might need to work a little bit harder and give him a reminder. So we'll see how he does. Heel. Beautiful. Lovely girls. So I want to make that connection, let him know that he's working with me and that I'm going to support him on this walk before I step outside and hit whatever stimulants we're going to see. So front door open. Have we got a calm, stable dog? Looks like it, let him check out what's in front of him. And again, we'll get him just to sit. Sit. While I close the door. Sit. So this will be really tricky for him. He does know Lenny. We'll see how he copes just listening to me. Wait. Excellent, good boy, really good self-control. And I'm going to reward that because that's really, really hard for him. Never done that before. That's the first time uh, he's actually met Lenny in that way, just straight outside his house. We've obviously seen them before, so he does know him, but not particularly well. Um, but I just wanted to show you how important it is to not have a dog that suddenly drags you over. We want to start teaching him just to relax, just to watch dogs walk past. They're not all there for him to play with, especially not tiny little ones when he weighs as much as he does right now. So it's all about controlling the arousal. He's got a lot of testosterone on board at the minute, so he's gonna be much more reactive than he was just a month or so ago. So I've got a really different dog at this point. All right, let's go see if we can find Lenny. All right, 
So we see that arousal level there? That's where you'll lose control pretty quick. So we'll pull him out. Come. Come. Sit. Now, I just want to point this out. Look at the arousal state. His hackles are just up on the back of his neck because he's really excited. This is a really, really valuable lesson for him to learn is to start attaching a little bit of calm and learn how to manage this when he's in an aroused state. So testosterone doesn't help with this. He's still really immature. So this is all part of his learning. And you'll see immediately the first thing's happened, he's switched off from me. I have got to get that back better, good. If I'm going to have any hope of being able to control him around the dog. So we'll just take him out of the equation, come. Good, heel. We'll bring him back to what he knows. Bring that arousal level down a little bit before putting a pressure, the pressure on again and taking him back into the situation. If he learns, oh, good boy, beautiful. Here, look, I just want to keep that connection. I'm relying on those foundations that I built with him when he was a puppy to see whether he could cope. Lenny's a great little dog, but he's really noisy. He's quite excitable. And Moose is going to react to that. So we'll see how he goes down. Walk on, walk on. You watch his body language. So he's, he's, he's confident, but he's not confident. You can see the, the differences in his body language. And there, as they get close, he's going to He's going to start to get aroused again, so I'm going to lose him. So we'll pull him out. Miss, come. Good boy. Check out the hackles. A lot of people think that this is aggression. So this is just arousal, and it's actually really, really common in labs. I remember when Hogan did it for the first time, um, and I was actually quite shocked because it was really quite apparent that he was in a really over-threshold state. Obviously, no aggression there at all. Um, but it is, a, it is a little bit of a misconception. So just bear that in mind. It doesn't always mean the dog is gonna be aggressive. It does mean they are aroused. So the situation will get out of hand quite quickly if you don't deal with it. Walk on. We'll just walk past this time. Thank you. I did just give him a little flick on the lead there. It's not acceptable just to lure him away from a situation like that. He needs to know he's got to listen to me. It's not about hurting the dog. It's not about causing the dog discomfort. It's about saying, oi, pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you're going to end up in big trouble. <laughs> Lenny's been a good boy. Let's go. The differences in, in him is insane. He wouldn't have even paid Lenny any attention a month, six weeks ago. He'd have just said hi and carried on. It would have all been about me. So I really wanted to show how different your dog becomes. This is not the dog, look at the tail. <laughs> this is not the dog that I had a couple of months ago at all. He's still amazing, he's still lovely, but we do have testosterone effect in his brain. And it's really important that new dog owners understand if they don't ramp their, th their dog training up during this time, you can completely lose control of your dog. And all your foundations, no matter how good they were, are gonna go out the window. Once you've had that initial introduction between the two dogs and they understand each other and they've had that communication, you'll see how quickly that calms down and you can actually end up walking with a buddy dog quite comfortably that your dog's been reactive to to begin with. So just bear in mind, dogs are in the moment, they'll have their conversations and then they'll move on. So if you understand what's going on, the better idea you've got about what your dog is saying, the best idea you will have about whether to keep them in that environment or not. If you look at his body language now, much more neutral, tail position low, He's happy, much more comfortable, not in the aroused state that he was in. So just in a few minutes, you can really turn around the dog's understanding just by taking control of that situation, taking a little bit of time just to get the two dogs settled, and then we could easily go and have a nice walk together now. Wait. Beautiful, good. Let's go. So that, this is really interesting as well. So, so Moose, want, Moose will want to go coffee. Watch. Ah, <laughs> what's that? We've done two days of leg cocking and uh, we've not quite managed it today. No point being on your phone with a young adolescent male. You need to be shoulders up, head up, look where you're going, walk with purpose, keep the connection with your dog. This is just loosely walking. I'm not asking him to heal. I just, hello, you heard the word heal. 
I just want him to be respectful of the fact I'm on the end of the lead. The lead is just there for a bit of security. So I want him to want to walk with me. And all your body posture, your attitude, your confidence is gonna come straight down through that lead. Oh, good. Very good. And it's gonna tell him whether he's got anything to be worried about or not. Your attitude, your stance, where you're looking, how you're behaving, the pace that you're going, your dog is aware of absolutely everything and he should be responding to it without too much pressure. So this is what I've noticed about Moose, where, whereas a few weeks back, he would have been jumping straight back to here as soon as I stopped. Now we've got a little bit more bravado going on. He's sitting out in front of me and if I let that go, he'll be at the end of the lead before I know it. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of pressure on. Let's go. Get him back where I want him to be and then we walk on. Come on then, Lenny. Good. Again, a little bit of pressure on, don't want him out there. So I am gonna give him a little oi on the collar. He needs to listen. There, little oi, come back. Where do I want him? Just gonna get him back under control here. Take him back. Okay, we'll walk back now and we'll uh, take Lenny back home. He's had his little trot out, his little bit of socialization with Moose. That's all right, you're welcome. How are you anyway? You're and a sparkly shimmer on our skin. Restoring everything within. So all this jumping up, just a little bit of insecurity. So you, when you bring him outside and something slightly different, it just gets a little bit excitable, not quite sure what's going on. So it's just looking for a little bit of reassurance. So I wouldn't I wouldn't just mark that as just poor behaviour. I'll just consider actually what mindset is the dog in and whether he's coping with what he's seeing in front of him. And then we just need to offer him a bit of support. So I've just put Moose on just a really simple slip lead. Um, to use a simple slip lead properly, it should be actually quite high around the dog's neck. I am not using this intentionally to get him to stop and listen to me all the time. It's just really there if I need it in an emergency, just to put a little bit of pressure on him. But that's why you'll notice it is actually quite loose. So you'll notice that he's following my body language cues more than my voice. That's because that's his primary mode of communication. So if you're using your voice excessively and the dog's ignoring you, doesn't necessarily mean he's ignoring you on purpose. It could just very easily be he can't process what you're saying. So calm everything down, get it quiet, and start working with your body language cues. Yes, beautiful. You'll notice when the dog's really in tune with you that they will actually mimic what you do with your body language. Perfect. Just gonna reward that, because it was lovely. Just him checking in and tidying his bottom up. Haven't taught him that. He's just literally followed my cue just to come in close when I ask him to come in close. So the lead at this point is just a little connection from me to him that when he's distracted, it just gives me the opportunity to say, pay attention, pay attention, something different is gonna happen. It's not here to strangle him, it's not here to choke him, it's not here to do any damage or cause any physical harm whatsoever. But if I don't have that, I'm gonna be forgotten. He's gonna be a big dog and he needs to be listening to what I'm asking him to do to make sure he's safe around everybody, including me. Are you ready? 